Hello everyone, my name is Natalie and this is a tutorial for the programming language called PEEP. We will be addressing four main points throughout my presentation which include number one, defining and giving a brief history of PEEP, two, the rules and commands required for writing a PEEP program, three, tracing through a PEEP program, and four, explaining execution tactics for the particular program we have implemented. So let's get started. So what is PEEP? To the right of your screen is an example of an enlarged PEEP program. PEEP is a type of esoteric programming language. Esoteric programming languages, also known as ESOLANGs, refer to programming languages that experiment and test the boundaries of programming language design. PEEP was designed by David Morgan Marr and consists of bitmaps that look like the abstract art of the Dutch painter Piet Mondrian. Hence, the PEEP programming language was named after the artist. PEEP uses a stack for storage of all data values, which are integers. These integers in the stack can also be read in or printed as ASCII character values. Each of the blocks of color are individual pixels of color. Like I said earlier, the picture to the right is an enlarged image of a PEEP program so that the details can be easily seen. In enlarged programs, the word CODAL is used to represent the actual pixels of the enlarged graphic. PEEP consists of 20 colors, as you see on the screen. The colors are in order according to brightness and hue. For example, if I were to start my program on the color dark magenta, move three spots in the hue cycle, and two in the lightness cycle, I would go from the color dark magenta to the color green. It is important to mention that additional colors may be used. However, the usage of colors outside of this chart is implementation dependent. Now that we have gone over the color sequences, we are going to move on to how the code is evaluated. The PEAT interpreter begins executing the program with the color block in the upper left corner of the program. The interpreter maintains the direct pointer abbreviated DP, and the codal chooser, abbreviated CC. The direct pointer initially points to the right, but is also able to point left, down, or up. The codal chooser initially points to the left, but is also able to point to the right. Commands are defined by transitioning from one color block to another color block. The number of steps in the hue cycle and lightness cycle in the transition from one color to the next determines what command is executed. When encountering a white codal, the interpreter slides across the white block in a straight line until it encounters a colored codal or an edge. Black codals are treated as edges are. They restrict the progression of the program. If the interpreter moves into a black block or off an edge, and the codal chooser is negated. The interpreter tries to move from its current block to the next position. If this fails, the direct pointer is moved clockwise once. If, after eight attempts, the interpreter is incapable of moving from its current position, then the program terminates. From the chart on your left, you can see the different commands that can be executed, as well as their meanings in a given program. We are going to start to trace our first program. As you can see, we are starting on the light red codal, which is in the upper leftmost corner, and going to the red codal. There is no hue change, and there is a lightness change of 1. Going from the light red to red results in pushing 1 onto the stack. The direct pointer has a value of 0, which means it's pointing to the right, and the codal chooser has a value of negative 1, which means it's pointing to the left. I'm going to trace through the rest of this program slowly. Now we are going from red to dark red, so the number 1 is pushed onto the stack. Hence, the stack now contains 1, 1. The two ones that were on the stack were popped off, added, then the result was pushed back onto the stack. Now the stack has a value of 2. The top value of the stack, which was a 2, was copied and pushed onto the stack. Thus, the stack now reads 2, 2. The top value was duplicated again. The stack now reads 2, 2, 2. 
Once more, the top value was duplicated. The stack now reads 2, 2, 2, 2. The top two values in the stack were popped off, added, and the result was pushed back onto the stack as a 4. The top two values were popped off the stack, multiplied, and then the product was pushed back onto the stack with a value of 8. This multiplicative step was repeated, resulting in the stack containing the value 16. 16 was duplicated. The stack now reads 1616. The two values on the stack were pushed off, added together, and popped back on. The stack now contains 32. We want to push 1 onto the stack, so we go one shade darker in the lightness cycle. The stack now reads 32, 1. We next added the values on the stack, 32 plus 1, to give us 33, and that value was popped back onto the stack. Here we have one of the final steps being taken to achieve our end result. The number 33 has been popped off as a character value. I want to go more in depth here because I feel that the end of PEEP programs is the most important to understand when coding in this language. I have separated the codals by white lines to make them more defined. The first step that will take place is that the light cyan codal located at 14-0 will try to proceed to the black codal located at 15-0. It sees that it is a black codal, so the direct pointer is moved clockwise once and tries to point at the codal located at 15-1. The direct pointer is moved down and to the right. This also points to a black codal, so the next location is tried at 13-2, and so on. All of the options lead to a black codal or edge, which means the program will then terminate. We have just stepped through our first program in PEEP. This program produces an exclamation point. An exclamation point has an ASCII character value of 33. This is an image of the second program I wrote in PEEP. This program outputs Hello World. What is important to note is that only the outside edge of the picture is the actual program. The inside, surrounded by black, is never executed by the program because the black color provides a sort of barrier from the interpreter. You can use the first link to find the Python code of the PEAT interpreter that I use to run the programs. Also, you can find more documentation on the interpreter program with the last two links. The neighbors function on top is currently in the PEAT interpreter. I found that because this method is recursive, it may require the addition of the set recursion limit function. The code in the upper right hand side increases the recursion limit to 50,000. This is necessary because Python has a recursion limit, and if we do not add this piece of code, the program will crash. Another option is using the code on the bottom. This code has been translated from the recursive function above to be a non-recursive version. If we choose to use this function, we do not need to increase the recursion limit. The final piece of code that was added to the original PEAT interpreter is this run function. This function contains a while loop that keeps calling the step function. A step function is given in the original program but this run function is required to step through each piece of the program. Finally, there are two ways to run a given PEAT program. For both cases, a new interpreter needs to be made containing the name of the image and the PVM function, which is the PEAT virtual machine function, to reset the direct pointer and codal chooser to their default locations. Then we can call interpreter.step to go through the program one step at a time. 
We can also call interpreter.run to step through the entire program at once. I would like to thank you all for watching my tutorial for the programming language Peep.